our discussion today will be on a very important topic of cohesion and disintegration both this concepts were brought to the center by the work of hens cohort and hens cohort created a school in psychoanalysis called self psychology so we have seen before one way to classify psychoanalysis all schools in psychoanalysis is to classify them in five categories drive school object relation school independent school intersubjective school and the self psychology school so cohut created self psychology and in self psychology a very important concept in cohut almost a center of his conceptual thinking is cohesion and disintegration now what do we mean by this when we are healthy we feel we have a center that is strong and the center is able to coordinate the whole system in a way that we feel healthy happy energetic creative playful and we feel like doing something in the world and living out a life of purpose and celebration contrast to this we also experience states where we feel the coordinator inside is not able to coordinate the system and there is disintegration and chaos in the system and this can be experienced both in biological sickness and in psychological sickness the feeling of disintegration strictly from a psychological standpoint the coordinator the central coordinator has some strength of its own so it is able to face challenges to a certain intensity and after that intensity the coordinator starts disintegrating and this is where a series of problems occurs because of disintegration however in the face of challenge if the coordinator inside can remain solid without any disintegration then we are able to successfully go through the challenge in a psychological sense regardless of whether we are successful or unsuccessful in the outer world that's a different issue altogether so remaining cohesive non disintegrated in the face of challenge is a key descriptor of psychological health and this is where the centrality of our discussion today comes in of cohesion and disintegration of that coordinator now that coordinator typically we call as ego but cohut uses the word self and cohut does not define self but is clear that the self is not ego and this creates lot of problems because we as we go into discussion we will see what are the problems and how we can resolve it but cohut is clear that self is not the ego but a larger entity than the ego and he talks about cohesion and disintegration of the self not the cohesion and disintegration of the ego although in some places when he writes he almost uses the word self as a synonym of ego but he is very clear in most places that the two are different and then the question comes up that cohut also talks about the self being created in the process of growing up and this self creation involves the environment in a very deep way we we'll look into it on what parameters the environment comes into self formation but even while cohut self is under formation unconsciously the defenses are being used coordination is being done and therefore there is 
some sort of ego some sort of self not self but at least ego that is doing the system's work even before the self formation is complete so even as covid self is getting formed there is a system's ego as freud calls it partly conscious partly unconscious so covid also accepts that part and therefore the ego partly conscious and partly unconscious exists even before the self formation is complete so covid distinguishes the two although i personally like to bring the two together how we will see later but covid talks about cohesion and disintegration of the self and he makes a very important point that this is at times in a group of patients more important than just doing the freudian or kleinian classical work so let us go into the details of this discussion when we talk about development of a child there are many lines of development which constitute the full process of development so when we say the process of development from 0 to 5 years in 0 to 5 years many things are happening and it is so complicated that we cannot understand everything at once so we understand it in parts and some of the parts we understand are this there is a physiological line of development of the organs and the body there is a neurological line of development of development of the neurological apparatus in a particular way there is a linguistic side of development which deals with reading writing understanding language there is a cognitive line of development which goes into the cognitive capacity development age appropriate there is a affective side which is what psychoanalysis mostly focuses on and there is a motor side and there is a social side all these lines of development are simultaneously going on and maybe some more lines we have not yet discovered completely and all these lines put together will constitute the full developmental process now just as there are lines of development we understand also in psychoanalysis lines of pathology that these lines of development may not happen in an optimum way and if that is so difficulties can come so what are the lines of pathology in the same period as psychoanalysis describes it freudian school or freud himself develops the psychosexual line of pathology development one line of pathology development is psychosexual the freudian aspect jungian school talks about the archetypal line the archetypal line of activation and deactivation of certain archetypes not happening correct in childhood creates problems kleinian school talks about the line of the split open and close the movement from paranoid schizoid to depressive position and one more line of pathology is given by the kleinian school istdp talks about the central dynamic sequence which is one more line of pathology and then kohut talks about the line of self development which is one more line of pathology so the idea in kohut is not that the line of self pathology is the only line rather it is one of the many lines of pathology development for any person pathology can develop because of problem in any of these lines and maybe some of these lines define the same thing in different language so there can be an overlap of course there can be an overlap but what kohut says is something very different from this four and adds to this four lines of pathology development and kohut talks about the self development line of pathology development and two important areas there are the concept of cohesion and the concept of disintegration what is the idea here kohut says there is something called the self about which he develops the whole school of psycho self psychology but does not define the self and this self can be healthy or unhealthy 
based upon the environment of its development so this cohort self is different from young self young self is inborn and not created out of a process cohort self is a phenomenal self created out of a process it is not a inborn self and cohort says the key problem regarding the self is its cohesion or disintegration if the self development has happened well and the self is healthy cohesion is high disintegration is low if the self development has not happened rightly something has gone wrong because of constitution or environment or both then cohesion is low disintegration is easy and high and frequent so what happens if there are problems of the self cohort says if somebody has a self problem of low cohesion and high propensity to disintegration in such situations the classical psychoanalytic work does not give good results rather the person feels even more distress when interpretations are given so we are talking here of fragile group of patients who have a self problem and because the self is weak not developed in a good way the cohesion is less propensity to disintegration is high and therefore the presupposition of classical psychoanalysis that an interpretation will disintegrate for a moment and then a healthy reintegration will take place that capability to usher in a healthy reintegrative process after a momentary disintegration from an interpretation that capacity is not there when the self is in problem so the interpretation causes disintegration but the reintegration just cannot happen by itself and therefore the person feels even more difficult than before and in such fragile cases where the self is very weak cohesion is low disintegration propensity is high the classical psychoanalytic approach does not work rather it proves damaging in many cases instead of helping and in such cases cohort says a cohesion approach works and now we have many videos in istdp where a fragile person we can see it on video how a fragile person disintegrates when the cohesion is low even in the face of smallest of interpretations subtle and very weak interventions also can cause disintegration so and we also see that where there is a self problem a fragility problem we have to provide safety and support rather than interpretation or do any affect work and the cohesion method now is surreptitiously getting into istdp in case of fragile patients now this is where some discussion is required on what is this self cohort is clear his self is different from ego and the self in a way is a larger entity than the ego and the self may be providing strength to the ego to operate its defenses however the relation between the two is not very clearly enunciated the way i look at it is this i think of what cohort calls as self as a personality ego or a social ego and the what freud calls the ego i call that the system ego something that is working largely in the unconscious mind it partly in the conscious mind but the unconscious part of freud's ego right, i call as system ego 
is a mistake here. So, the way I look at it is, I divide the ego So, what is system ego? System ego means? Just a moment. Yeah, so coming to your question, uh, if you look at a child, even before his personality formation is complete, even before associations related to himself have not yet cohered around the concept of I, the, there is some part of the mind which is operating the defenses at the unconscious level. So if we look at early life split, if we look at early life uh, projections, if we look at early life projective identification, all of them are coordinated by some agency in the mind even before a social personality of the child is fully formed. And that part of the mind which unconsciously uses all the defenses and creates a compromise between the id and the superego, that agency that is unconsciously at work even before the cohort's formation of self is complete that agency is what is called the system ego. It works at the systemic level and it is largely inborn. I think it's completely inborn because it starts functioning and using defenses by itself at an unconscious level. For example, deflection of the death instinct, deflection of aggression, deflection of envy, deflection of all the pure effects. All of that is done by some agency that we call the system ego. So, for example, if I am asleep and because of some reason, some aggression is uh, activated and I get a dream. Now the dream is created, defenses are used by some agency which we call the ego operating at the unconscious level and that part of the ego I call as the system ego. So system ego is that part of the ego which operates at the unconscious level. Nearer to the neurobiological system. less under the influence of the social circumstances. And there is another part of the ego which is operating more at the conscious level and is more dependent upon our environment and our self-image. And that part of the ego I call as social ego. And this social ego is nearest to Kohut's idea of the self. So what happens is, if you look at Sri Aurobindo's model of the mind, this social ego is called the external ego or externalized ego or something of that sort. And the location of that is in the front of the chest. 
Pohut does not localize in a geographical sense the self. Like all other entities, they are amorphous in terms of geography. Or let me say they are geography agnostic in a way. We don't know where they are. But Sri Aurobindo puts the externalizing ego right in front of the chest, and that I think is what we can call the social ego. And whenever we feel an acute sense of shame, that is where we first realize that emptiness, that anxiety, and that feeling to withdraw and vanish. So. one way to conceptualize is to redefine ego as a combination of social ego and system ego system ego is that which works unconsciously and is nearer to the biological system social ego is that which is related to our self image in a very strong way is located in front of the chest and is largely under the influence of environment it is a very social entity where a system ego is largely largely a uh, psychobiological entity so if you define in this way then our ego strength becomes a combination of social ego strength and the system ego strength now what happens is when kohut says self if you take it to be social ego then we are talking about cohesion and the strength of the social ego and the disintegration of the social ego and in a normal state this social ego is able to coordinate and provide strength rather provide strength to the system ego to coordinate the system well and this cohesion of the social uh, ego that also provides a feeling of stability goodness positivity i energy and so on it's a very psychological aspect of our ego and when suppose you have an insult humiliation and this disintegrates then the strength it was providing to the system ego also goes down and then the system ego is not able to operate defenses as successfully and we have a outblow of some negative effect mostly anxiety so this social ego when it is cohesive intact it creates a state of positivity energy creativity playfulness happiness relating to others and when it disintegrates it creates the state of rage of anxiety of chaos of paranoid schizoid position and the system ego is not able to actually control the system and therefore it appears that the social ego when it is cohesive and strong is also contributing to the coordination of the system in its own way and also is providing strength to the system ego this seem to be the two functions the part of the ego function of coordination is done by the social ego the positive part of the ego function and at the same time providing strength to the system ego so the functions of keeping the state happy productive creative relating all of those functions are done by the social ego and strength is provided by the social ego to the system ego when social ego collapses or disintegrates the functions cannot be done well and then it falls upon largely the system ego to create dysfunctional solutions which become symptoms so these are the lines of pathology put forward by wood the self development line of pathology so this brings us to the next question that if wood talks about self then what are the characteristics of healthy self and unhealthy self so kohut says if self development has happened well and of course as we said there is lot of controversy about what is self and i understand self to be social ego 
defined in my own way, but Kohut does not talk about that. Kohut says self is different than ego and says you can have a healthy self or an unhealthy self. If you have a healthy self, then what are the characteristics? Cohesion is high, it is stable, resilient to challenge and trauma, it is strong, it is positive, playful, happy, energetic, exploratory. This is the, these are the characteristics of a healthy self. It is also a very relating self, forget, forget it. It is a relating and a social self. If because of certain reasons, self-development does not go on well, Kohut says you end up be, have developing an unhealthy self. An unhealthy self can be of three types. Psychotic self, borderline self and narcissistic self. Psychotic self has least cohesion, maximum propensity to disintegrate. And often it disintegrates even without a challenge spontaneously. Borderline self is more cohesive than the psychotic self and the stability is slightly more than the psychotic self. It disintegrates but less occasionally compared to the psychotic self. The narcissistic self is more cohesive and more stable compared to both of them. And the disintegration actually needs a challenge from outside only then it disintegrates. It does not disintegrate spontaneously. Unless something very difficult is ignited inside. So Kohut says, if you have a healthy self, these are the characteristics. If your self-development process has not gone well, you develop an unhealthy self, these are the characteristics. So this is the idea of Kohut about a healthy self and an unhealthy self. And this brings us to the next part, the reasons why somebody would develop a healthy self or an unhealthy self. How does this process happen? What happens that you end up developing a healthy self or you end up developing an unhealthy self? Kohut says, this phenomena are important. It is this set of phenomena which determines whether you will develop a healthy self or an unhealthy self. And of course one more part is constitution that we are not put in here. But these are apart from the constitution, these are the factors. First is mirroring. And we will go into details of all these factors. First is mirroring. Mirroring means, Kohut says, we all have an inborn tendency of exhibitionism. And we exhibit ourselves how good we look, how talented we are how impressive we are, we exhibit ourselves to others expecting admiration and that is called mirroring. If others appreciate it and complete successfully the process of our exhibitionism, the mirroring process is complete. But if others don't acknowledge us or don't admire us, admire us intense feelings of shame are create, is created. And this results in a mirroring failure. So we need people around us in early childhood and we need them to acknowledge us and admire us. If they don't, if they are very critical or indifferent or neglecting, there is a mirroring failure. And if there is a mirroring failure, that can be one cause why you would develop an unhealthy self. Second process as Kohut says is idealization. That we need good enough people around us whom we can idealize and then internalize those good people, that idealization. 
If that does not happen, that is also one of the reasons why you may develop a unhealthy self. Who talks about self-object experiences? We have done this before. We are repeating it. Here, who uses the word self-object? It is not self and object; two different words. It is one word. Self-object, meaning there is an object in the outside world, but the object behaves as though it was an extension of our self. that we are two different bodies but almost like his mind is such that it works to obey and please my mind so although he is a different object but not completely in the mind and therefore experiences with him where he does exactly as i want him to do are called self object experiences kohut says we all need self object experiences and if we don't get it then we try to get it in therapy and not getting adequate self object experiences can also lead to a creation of unhealthy self twinship experiences the experiences of friendship where there are two people who intensely like each other usually of the same age and they play with each other and they relate intensely to each other in spirit of equality and commonality of age and world view and concerns this creates a twinship experience if you don't have adequate of it it also can lead be one of the reasons for this over talks about impingement which is intrusion so if when the child is playing too much of intrusion in the child's life and that can create on healthy self alter ego experiences we want somebody who is the other but like us he is like us in many ways but he is the other and being with that person gives us alter ego experiences we need empathy from the environment not a critical attacking environment but a peaceful understanding positive environment supportive environment we don't have it we get problems of an healthy self kohu talks about an arc of tension that there should be a healthy tension between your capabilities and your goals and it, the goals should be such that one you should have a positive goal and there should be some stretching of competences and that healthy arc of tension between the capability and the goal is what he calls the arc of tension or he calls it a bipolar self on one end are the competences on the other end are the goals and ideals and then the process of transmuting internalization where you internalize something from the outside when it is present before you but after doing it many times something interesting happens the internalization at some point becomes so complete that the inside changes and what was outside now is perpetually inside and you identify with it and becomes a part of yourself so any internalization which changes completely the inside is what we call is the transmuting internalization an internalization that transmutes or changes permanently in some way the situation inside so kohut says if these things happen well in childhood you develop a healthy self if these things don't happen well you de develop a unhealthy self and how they how much they have gone wrong will determine how unhealthy or healthy how unhealthy the self will be and if they go right then how much right they have gone will determine how healthy the self is so this is what what would essentially talks now we will go into details of these points and see how 
each of these points leads to healthy self or unhealthy self and thereby to cohesiveness or disintegration so we'll take up one by one and we'll also bring in other theories to understand it because one of the difficulties of ohuti is he has not brought concepts from other theories into his writing and thinking and therefore it becomes slightly difficult to understand it but we will take concepts from other theories to understand these points and in that interdisciplinary discourse understand how all this phenomena lead to cohesiveness or disintegration propensity any questions no sir okay so zoom says 2 minutes to go so i'll send you a new link okay sir 